Hello, in this video we're going to add ESLint to our gulp configuration. This video is going to build on the gulp setup that we did in the last video, so if you don't have the code from that project, you can get it from GitHub at github.com slash bjanderson slash jspm dash angular dash core, and we'll go ahead and pull that repo for this project. So git clone and the GitHub repo, and then that's going to create a directory named JSPM Angular Core, and we'll CD into that. And that'll put us on the master branch, and you can get this code by doing git checkout gulp setup, and then you can uh, create a new direct uh, branch by doing git checkout dash b, and we'll call this ESLint setup. All right, now we want to run npm start so that we can install our npm and jspm dependencies. And once those are installed, we will run git, or no, npm install, save dev. We're going to do gulp eslint and babel eslint. And once those install, we want to open up Sublime Text. So we'll do subl dot. And then we're going to create a new file in our gulp tasks folder. And we'll call it eslint.js. And this is what our eslint.js is going to look like. And here we're just requiring gulp and gulp eslint. We're creating a task named eslint, and we're telling it to look at all of our JavaScript files and ignore our client config JS, our JSPM packages files, and our node modules files. Then we're going to run eslint, and eslint format is going to display the results in our command terminal. Then we want to create a file named .eslint RC. And this is what our ESLint RC looks like. So we're setting up our environment so that it's going to support uh, browsers, JavaScript 6, and Node.js. And we're going to extend the ESLint recommended rule set. And you can use the parser. You can set parser to Babel ESLint. And if you don't want to use the Babel ESLint parser, you can still uh, get JavaScript 6 support by putting parser options and set the ECMA version to 6 and the source type to module. And uh, these two, you can have one or the other. So you can take out parser options and just use Babel, or you can take out the Babel parser and just use the parser options, or you can have them both together. It doesn't really affect anything. Um, and then our rules, we're going to have uh, two space indentation and line breaks Unix style, single quotes, and always require semicolons. And that'll be our basic rule set. And now we can add ESLint to our serve gulp task. And we definitely want to add it to NodeMon so that ESLint runs when you start your project. So when you run gulp, ESLint will run before NodeMon runs. And since ESLint is a little bit slow, um, it might take about five extra seconds to reload your page whenever you make changes. You can add a watch for it in your JavaScript file watch. So we can put ESLint here. And that will slow down your, your page reloads a little bit. So you that's optional. You can put it here or not. Um, but I do definitely recommend putting it in your NodeMon task just because it It'll run at least once and you'll be aware of any errors or warnings that show up. Because uh, if you don't have it in your watch task, then you have to run it yourself to see if there's anything uh, going on with your JavaScript files. Okay, so now we can run it. So we will do, uh, let's run gulp eslint. And you can see it takes a little while to run. 
and we found some indentation errors so we're going to go fix those that is in our home module JS and our main module JS so it doesn't like how that's formatted we'll just go in here go to home module JS and we will fix the way that the indentation is formatted in here and the same in main module JS and now those should look good to ESLint we'll run it again to make sure and again it takes you know it says about four four to five seconds to run and that time it worked fine so now if we run gulp we should see ESLint run before NodeMon so there's ESLint and then after ESLint finishes NodeMon runs so that's expected and now we can test to make sure that it runs when a JavaScript file changes. So let's go to Home Controller and we can shrink this down. Let's kind of get a view of what's going on overall. So now if we change this, you'll see reloading browsers, starting ESLint, and the browser reloads after ESLint finishes and it updates correctly. So like I said, if you wanted to j not have that extra delay when the browser reloads, you would take that out. And then, of course, you have to restart Gulp for that change to take effect. But it will still run ESLint when you start Gulp, so that you'll at least be aware of any errors when it happens. And we'll go back here and make this change and you can see that the browser reloads much faster without ESLint in there. Okay, so that does it for adding ESLint to our Gulp configuration. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and leave a comment below.